Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So here's a study for today. It's called "Man Shall Live by All the Words of God," and uh, we start with John six from verse forty-eight. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world doesn't say for the life of the elect. John 6, 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, verily, verily, I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eat my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. So the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he, he that eats me, even he shall live by me this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead he that eats of this bread shall live forever this thing says he in the synagogue as he taught in capernaum many therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said this is a hard saying who can hear it when jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it he said to them does this offend you? What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickens the flesh, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not that his words are spirit and they are life. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, don't look, don't think Judas. It's, it's in ourselves within. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except if it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. The words of our Lord are spirit in our life. This means there is a spiritual meaning behind every story and every verse in the Bible. But this is a hard saying for most people, for they can't see the spirit behind the letters. The end result of misunderstanding the spiritual words of God is to stop walking with him, regardless of whether we know it or not. In Matthew 4, 1-4. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4 is repeated in Luke 4.4. 4. Luke 4.1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. So he wasn't just tempted for that one day. He was tempted for the whole 40 days. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said to him, if you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, but by every word of God, every word of God. The title of this study is taken from Luke 4.4. 4. If we look at how the Holy Spirit has inspired the use of the Greek word translated every, 
it would be abundantly clear to us that the verse indeed say that mankind shall live by all the words of God. This is the word translated every out of 12, 1,245, it's translated all 975 times translated and translated every 168 times. And those are the few that are translated to other words. Let's look at some verses where this word is translated all, Ephesians 1.11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. God indeed works all things after the counsel of his own will with no exceptions. Matthew 13, 34, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without the parables spake he not unto them. Everything that Jesus spoke to the multitude are parables, no exceptions. Without a parable, spake he not unto them. Mark 4.11. And he said to them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Even all of his actions are parables to those he has not given the keys or principles to understand them with no exceptions. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture, everything, are profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness with no exceptions. John 9, 1 through 7. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The healing of the blind man here happened in two steps. First, the Lord formed clay using saliva and dirt. His saliva, of course, represents his words, but it is still mixed with earthly understanding. So he told the man to, to wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. The Greek word translated scent is apostello, which you can probably all, already guess is um, where the word apostle come from. Uh, to set apart, that is by implication, to send out properly on a mission. We, we first start with carnal understanding before someone is sent to us to reveal the mysteries or secrets of the kingdom of God. Romans 10, 15 and 16. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Apostello. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Here we see our Lord healing a man with leprosy. Mark 1, 40 to 42. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and says to him, I will be you clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. The word leprosy comes from the word white. There is a positive and negative meaning of the, this word. 
But to see what spiritual leprosy means, here's an excerpt from a study. That is the negative of the word white, which is likened to spiritual leprosy, which is walking by the flesh and not by faith. This is a study by Pete. The priests of the Lord examined themselves and the brethren themselves. The Lord, the priests of the Lord examined themselves first. Take heed to yourself and to all the flock. And the brethren for this disease, which is identified by the white lesions. Our adversary, the devil, is clever in transforming himself into this white appearing being. In 2 Corinthians 11, starting from verse 12. And I will continue doing what I am doing now because I want to stop those people from having a reason to boast. They would like to say that the work they boast about is the same as ours. They are false apostles, lying workers. They only pretend to be apostles of Christ. That does not surprise us because even Satan changes himself to look like an angel of light. So it does not surprise us if Satan's servants make themselves look like servants who work for what is right. But in the end, those people will get the punishment they deserve. Even the resurrection of the dead to sinful flesh is a parable of the true resurrection to an incorruptible body. In Mark 5.35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead, why trouble you the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he says to, to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And he comes to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he says to them, why make you this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead but sleeps, and they laughed him to scorn. The, the wisdom of God is foolishness to the carnal mind. But when he had put them all out, he takes the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and enters in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said to her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say to you, arise, resurrection from, comes from the word arise. And straight away, and damsel rose and walked, for she was of the age of 12, 12 foundation. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. And that command and commanded that something should be given her to eat. The words doesn't, the, the Lord doesn't just reveal his words to anyone. That's why he charged the man that no man should know it. Here's the spiritual reality of the resurrection. First Corinthians 15, starting from verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. So they have different glories. The, the lesser resurrection has a different glory than the better resurrection and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it's honor shame it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was living, was made the living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, we're not spiritual at first, but that which is natural and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have been have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Let's go back to our verses tonight. Look for one to four. 
And Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said to him, if you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. We discovered earlier, but by all the words of God. Is this also a parable? We, we are already told everything he did is a parable, a physical symbol of spiritual reality. Here's where Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4 4 came from. Deuteronomy 8.2 and 3. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you know not, neither did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Remember that manna, their fathers didn't know. It's the same as the words of God. We start by not knowing it. And then we are, um, we are cured in two steps. We see the words of God mixed with carnal understanding. And then we, someone is sent to us to, to explain the mysteries, the secrets of the words of God, the words of God. You can only see, you can see the parallels now. Christ was taken into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days. And all those times he was tempted by the devil. The Lord led Israel for 40 years in the wilderness and tried them for 40 years. He humbled them and suffered them to hunger. When the devil tempted Christ to command a stone to become bread, his answer, Luke 4, 4, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by all the words of God. What is he saying? Being hungry and eating bread in the wilderness. What's the spiritual meaning of being hungry? Amos 8, 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Isaiah 3, 1, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, does make, take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. When he blinds us, when, when our light turns to darkness, how great is that darkness? The whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. What is the spiritual significance of being fed manna? Revelations 2.17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to you of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone and the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it, receives it. We saw this verse before. John 6, 51. And I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. What our Lord is saying again in parable is that we must live by all the words of God for for the old man to be converted into the new man. We have borne the image of the earthy, and we shall also borne the image of the heavenly. But we must go through a process. This process involves living by all the words of God within. Luke 13, 32. And he said to them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. The third day means the process of perfecting the new man. It involves fulfilling all the words of God in our life, within, spiritually. But who has believed our report? Do we have any part of the words of God which offends us? 
because we don't understand it. Any part that is hard, a hard saying for us. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We now go to the parable of Christ's crucifixion. I want to read um, the uh, letter that Io answered, the question that Io answered. So, this Christ, so did Christ fulfill the lake of fire? Christ's crucifixion is a parable of him fulfilling the spiritual reality of going through the lake of fire. Acts 3.18, but those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, Tophet, Gehenna, destruction of death, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. All that John and the other apostles wrote in the New Testament were from the only Bible of their day, the Old Testament. Christ has so fulfilled the Old Testament, it is written. So again, thank you for the brilliant question. How does Jesus Christ show us a pattern of himself partaking of the second death? The scriptures show that Jesus Christ was cast into the lake of fire. To answer this and for all to understand, please read first read the scriptural definition of the second death in the earlier sections to remind you, and you can then come and read this answer again. It will then become all clear if God wills. Without the understanding, everything I write here will remain hidden from your sight. This is uh, I your writing. If your foundation of the scriptural meaning definition of an event like the second death is a miss, you will continue learning, but not come to the deep knowledge of this truth and understanding the answer to this brilliant question. No one will profit at all. Now I begin to answer. Whatever you think you already know about the lake of fire, just pause on it for a second. Hold on to this definition, and it will all harmonize. Once you truly understand the lake of fire, which is the second that is a functional event, not ordinal, then you will be standing on a sea of glass mingled with fire, all transparent to you. If not, nothing will make sense anymore. And I'm not just talking about after this is over. We could... The second death is simply the destruction of death through death. Lake of fire, second death, the destruction of death, the carnal mind through death. Body of sin and the carnal mind, destroying it through death. Hold fast to that definition. Put which order in Adam to, to one side for a minute. Hold fast to that definition. Christ was the first to fulfill this event and became the first overcomer whom all, all overcomers of all time are granted to sit within his throne, John 16, 6, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you, ha you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with, my, with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And I'm set down with the Father in his throne. So Christ, therefore, must have shown a pattern of himself partaking of the lake of fire, which is the second death. That is why I say it's such a brilliant question. This gives me a great hope that the Lord will shake the heavens and the earth once more here. Peter saw Jesus in the day of his flesh showing this very example. John saw this very example of Christ fulfilling this event. Paul spoke many, many times of this in hidden wisdom, and so did the other apostles. And behold, this example is right before us that some of us brethren have been saying over and over again. First Peter 2.21, for, for even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example of the lake of fire, that you should follow his steps. Let's follow this very closely, brethren. A brilliant question deserves a truthful, methodical, scriptural answer. The dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and the beast, and the false prophets, all within us are the three main signified adversaries of the Lord in the book of Revelation. 
Satan, the beast, the beast, false prophets, and the kings of the earth and their armies are all gathered together to make war against him that sat on the white horse, against his army, the overcomers. Four angels, two witnesses, the seven angels, collectively we call the spiritual risen body of Jesus Christ. It is important this age-lasting scene in the heavens is set very clear, clearly to your understanding at this point, and who so reads. This is war in heaven set. Now here is wisdom. Those three adversaries of the Lord collectively signify this in scripture, dwell in the realm of death. That abode is called in the Hebrew word Sheol, in the Greek Hades. I know you know all these already, but follow the connections. Death dwells in Hades, hence throughout scripture you see it always written as death and hell. Here's the connection to Jesus Christ. He that has been delivered the power of death for a season, the devil, and his messengers to the earth, the false prophets, and the brute beasts, he empowers all their armies of unclean spirits in the heaven all the sin in the world all dwell in the body of sin that is the sinful flesh satan and his armies full strength is in the body of sin death the reign of the king of death king of darkness is in the mortal flesh and blood the strength of the law of sin and death is in the body of death the kingdom of darkness satan and his ministers has their reign in the realm of death that is for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is death. That's where all those adversaries signified in the book of Revelation reign. Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Sin reign in your mortal body. Satan, the beast, and false prophets are all powered by that one antichrist, unclean spirit. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and all of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of god almighty scroll back up again remember that age lasting scene set in heaven your heavens now so those three unclean spirits are the spirits of devils coming up against the army of god almighty the strength of those three unclean spirits the spirits of devils are the dragon the beast and the false prophet that is their strength is exercised in the body of death, the natural brute beast this is the deeper breakdown of how sin reigns, three unclean spirits, spirits of devils, in our throne, the heavens, in the body of sin and death. Their power is the carnal mind, Revelations 13 to 15. And the beast which I saw like unto a leopard, his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Without Christ, we can't. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and then that dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. So even the saints are overcome by the beast. Keep that in mind when we later talk of how the overcome saints like partake of the fire of the second death. There are saints that are yet to overcome the beast, but rather it's the beast overcoming them. Keep that in mind. That will be addressed later and will crystallize. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. If we look up this, uh, these words all, 
It's probably the same word that we saw earlier. The pass, P-A-S. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The power of the dragon given to the beast, which later empowered the false prophets, all takes place upon the earth. That is our mortal bodies. Now, if we want to destroy all those adversaries, where would you go to? We will have to go to that realm of sinful flesh, the battlefield of the carnal mind, the earthy death, signified also as to the first heaven and the first earth. Jesus Christ entered the realm of death to conquer as the conqueror or the destroyer of the last enemy, death. Hosea 13, 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, Sheol, I will be your destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. The last enemy, 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. In simpler explanation by Paul, Christ entered that realm in the form of a man, Philippians 2, 6, 8. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. This is the resurrection to shame in spiritual terms. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death became flesh, even the death of the cross, death to flesh, through what event? Second, I won't point to that hidden gem in verse 8. The likeness of man is one way Paul tells the Philippians, the fashion of a man. He puts it another way to the Romans, Romans 8.3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. The connection of Jesus Christ, sinful flesh, that flesh and blood to you and I, and I is to lay down an example for us. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Summary so far, Jesus Christ was sent. Again, there's that word sent by God the Father to that realm of death wherein dwells Satan, the beast, and the false prophets with all the unclean spirits in the book of Revelation. Here comes the Lord, Hebrews 10, 5. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering you would not but a body as you prepared me. I wonder in whose body, for what purpose? It is for one purpose only. Can we please let the disciple inspired to write the lake of fire, which is the second that tell us. First John 3 8. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested. That is the purpose. That he might destroy the works of the devil. There it is. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. How is the Lord going to do that? For the love of God, brethren, hold fast to the functional scriptural definition of the lake of fire, which is the second death. It is not ordinal, otherwise it will remain hidden from your eyes. Again, how is the Lord going to do that coming into that sinful flesh part of that? We need not be guessing. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Where is that going to take place? Hebrews 10, 5. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice an offering you would not but a body that has prepared me, that you has prepared me. There's the connection. Through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. A body has you prepared. Believe the scripture before your eyes. Through death, the devil with the power of death is, was, and will be destroyed in a prepared sinful body of flesh. So we finally made the connection to the devil being in the flesh of Christ with all those signified beasts and unclean, unclean spirits in that flesh. 
So he wasn't just tempted. It says he was tempted in all ways. He wasn't just tempted in those 40 days. He was tempted every day. And he has to, he has to resist that. Christ bearing the sins of the whole world, the devil and all his crazy armies. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. Look within first when thinking of that prepared body. Can we remember the functional definition of the lake of fire? The second death above again. What death could John the Beloved possibly be talking of? What type of death have we been told already that destroys spiritual beings such as Satan, the beast, the false prophets in a body of sin? Did John fail to tell us how? I say how the devil that deceives the whole world, all his armies, and the false prophet, the beast will be destroyed. Or did we mi misunderstood? This is when we are offended by his words. We misunderstand them. His spiritual definition of that one event from the beginning, causing unnecessary contentions. If we only listened. You judge. John told us earlier. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I beseech you, keep the commandments of God. Hold fast to the scriptural definitions. Do not take a jot or till out from applying it to yourself. See yourself as the saint overcome by the first by the beast first. Then you will see yourself as the saint that overcome the beast later. That is, an overcomer. Don't rob yourself by denying the first disastrous consequences. Revelation 20.10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. Those these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Comparing spiritual with spiritual, we have a clear answer to, does Jesus Christ show us a pattern of himself partaking of the second death? It is true that that is the lake of fire, which is the second death, that Jesus destroys death, the carnal mind. In less signified language, it is what it is, was, and will be through the body of death that Christ destroys death. That destroyed through that is the scriptural definition of the lake of fire. Hold fast to it. That's the key, the principle to all the hidden mysteries of this topic. Their answer is right in front of us. The old man. It is in the sinful flesh of Jesus Christ, all the sins of the world, John wrote, the king of death is resident. His death to the body of death is through a fiery trial. Baptism of fire. There's only one baptism, one Lord, one baptism. The drinking of the cup of God's wrath, the crucifixion of the old man typified as the dead of the cross. Paul told us in these verses about much deeper truths to them than we first imagined. Romans 6.6 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, like a fire, the second death, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The crucifixion of the body of death of Jesus Christ is the most hurtful thing that will ever happen. Bearing the sin, the sin, the devil and his angels in his body, through whom Peter, calling it rightly fiery trial, mentioned also what it is stripes. First Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, on the tree, in his flesh. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Paul said, crucified. Peter said, stripes, fiery trial to the flesh. It is one of the same outcome. It's death. Not similar, something similar or equivalent, but the dream and the event truly is one. As is the patience of the fate of the saints, Christ's fellow servants that will later become overcomers must die the same death as the forerunner, first that overcome all. Revelation 6.11 And white robes were given, 
to every one of them. And it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Christ gave the, that pattern example to follow to destroy death, the beast and the false prophet in the simple flesh of the old man. Paul has to be killed as Christ was and his follow and follow Christ to the second death. That is the destruction of his old man, his body of death where sin reigns. Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The overcomer first, Galatians 2.20. I, my old man, death, am crucified with Christ. Crucifixion and the lake of fire are one and the same spiritual event with a singular outcome to destroy death. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh is the new man. This is the overcomer that shall not be hurt of the lake of fire, shall not be crucified because... He is already crucified. He died to death. That is second death. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So to conclude, so as not to write an epistle again, the dream is one and there is one event to all. The death of Jesus Christ by mortifying the members of his flesh on the cross, dying daily, is all done in a parable. Mark 4, 11. And he said to them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, all they see is the crucifixion of our Lord. That's all they see. All these things are done in parables. The phrase, the second that is done in a parable by Jesus Christ. You cannot keep contending its definition. It's all done in a parable. This is the highest order of parables whose definition, if not understood, I fear ahead anyway. I leave it all in the hands of him who reveals to each man in due time. It's not literally dying a second time, brethren. Hence all the violent contradictions, assumptions, and equivalents just to make it all fit. An all ordinal definition will never result in one event to all. On the contrary, it will be something that will offend us as the disciples were offended by, the, by what he said because they, they didn't understand what he was saying. Examine yourself whether it aligns with the one way under heaven where all men will be saved. The smallest change in scriptural definitions prevents us from being pulled to higher heavens in the word. The second death has nothing to do with first or second group of men, not ordinal at all, but it's performing one function to destroy all that is in the realm of death. Once that is understood, then the brilliant question can get its deserving truthful answer, which harmonizes perfectly with any question anyone can ask. Conclusion. The example Christ gave us is the dying to the body of your sinful flesh, body of death through death. What functional event is that called again? The Lord called it losing our life. Apostle Paul called it mortifying our members, dying daily, and the wrath of God upon all the disobedience residing in our flesh. Apostle Peter called it purifying our souls in obeying the truth and judgment that must begin at the house of God. A very common one, Peter calls it, is fiery trial. Apostle John called it the second death. Paul I died and many other significations you will begin to see once you hold fast to the true definition of the spiritual word, the second death. Holding fast to a, so a pattern of sound words, we are holding fast to a pa pattern of sound words here because we, we must remember his words are spirit. So we, we must hold fast to a form of his spiritual words. We must all see the, all these spiritual synonyms. Here it is again. You begin to see it everywhere, as we have been saying, and was not heard by all. Colossians 1.22. In the body of his flesh, through the second death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight as the new man. 
Jesus Christ's example for us, a pattern for the next third part of man that will be brought through the fire is to die daily on the cross with him. He himself was obedient first to die, that is to come in the realm of death. In Adam, as the first in a bad body of sin and death once, then he went through the consuming fire of God. Luke 12, 49 to 50. I am come to send fire on the earth, wherein dwells the dragon, beast, false prophets, his armies. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a, bapti a baptism to be baptized with. It's the one baptism. And how am I straight until it be accomplished? Pure parables. What is the Lord saying? Baptism of fire. That event Paul calls it another name. Philippians 2.8. And being found in fashion as a man, earth, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The death of the cross. There's the simplified answer to, to the question. That is how Christ abolished, is abolishing, and will abolish death and his and all in that realm within you and I. To the Jew first, inner man within fulfillment, and then the Gentiles in the age to come. And once the body of sin of the flesh is done away with, all man in that flesh has been crucified, destroyed by lake of fire, then death no more. As an overcomer, new man is birthed, where there is no more death to be destroyed. The new man shall not be hurt the pain of death anymore. A little by little, day unto day event. John calls it, is, was, and will be event unto the death of death, through the lake of fire, second death. Revelations 2, 11, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. The new man can no longer be hurt of the cross as his flesh is gone, following the example and pattern of being crucified with Jesus Christ. New man can no more be hurt of the fire as the ministers has now become a flame of fire. Following the pattern of our forerunner being baptized with the fiery trial of the death of the cross. The new man can no longer be killed with the sword because the, he, old man, has already been killed with the sword. Following the example of him who kills with the mighty and great sword. Now the new man, the minister of flaming fire, can administer the fire, the smoke and brimstone. The three plagues, lake of fire, the sword to kill the rest of the dead within us or any members of his body. That is, become a functional part of the lake of fire, the risen body of Jesus Christ. And purpose is to be used of God to bring life of Christ to the rest of mankind. Typified as the best, the rest of man dead within you in the book of Revelation. And in due time, outwardly to the rest of the world. It all begins at the house of God. We have this reward in earnest down payment form. Hence, the dying daily is by this one event, the lake of fire, fiery trial, great tribulation, the death of the cross. 2 Timothy 1, 10. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, heirs tense. Hence, the dying daily continues as the pattern Christ and the apostles laid down for us. Now we can truly believe how Christ can relate to us all. He can relate to us all, not in some events or some things, but in all things, including the destruction of death in his flesh through the death of, all, of the cross. Hebrews 2.17, Wherefore, in all things it behooves him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That's why he's merciful to us. He knows how, how persistent this old man is. He knows that. He knows that it's difficult to make war with the beast. How difficult it is. He might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Christ can be merciful to the worst of sinners because he himself went through the same event as the children, as their forerunner, 
for the destruction of death in their sinful flesh. Christ truly can relate with us all. That is why I am com comforted that it will click in due time for all here. Hebrews 2.18, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, all that destroyed through the lake of fire that is second. He is able to comfort them that are tempted. That's why he's able to comfort us. Because he knows what it, how it is to fight this beast. Thank you for your excellent question. I pray you have been given sight to understand it all once you hold fast to the most important part, the functional definition of the lake of fire, which is the second death. If there's one thing I pray you get out of all this and correct, it's the scriptural definition of the second death. Your fellow brother being killed in the same way, the first overcomer through the fire trial that is death of the cross. Now let's look at this verse that has been the focus lately. Revelations 21.8, but, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers mongers, and sorcerers and idolaters all, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Do we still cringe when we see this verse and we are we offended when we say we have to live by this word? We are told, we are clearly told, mankind must live by all the words of God. If all we want, if all we think are those murderers out there and we are so excited to torment them, how are we going to become a merciful savior? Like our Lord, those murderers are not out there. Uh, have we been into gnashing and weeping and gnashing of teeth? Because we have, we have known we are the man. We are the man. Have we repented of all the brothers that we hated? If we hate a brother, we are a murderer. If we say we don't live by this verse, we just rendered this verse unprofitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. If we don't see all these things, fearful, unbelieving, abominable, as ourself, our old man, we will not be merciful to those who will be in the third harvest. People in Babylon cringe on this verse. If you tell them we need to apply it to us, they get offended. Are we offended? Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. We don't want to render this scripture unprofitable for us for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We are idolaters. We have idols of our hearts that we won't. We won't give up, even though the scriptures are staring us in the face. I hope this is of some help to your brothers and sisters. Let me open it for Mitch. Go ahead and open it for. I don't know how sure. do you want to do. How do you want to do it? Or raising of hands or. Yeah, let's just do hands. Um, but I just wanted to say uh, I really thank God for the spirit He's given you, Victor. I, th I thought He gave you a very calm and humble spirit, yet with authority. So be, be encouraged, brother. Thank you. Um, J I saw James's hand was up first, and then Deb, and then Sandra. So let's go to James over here. Hi, James. Hi, James. Hey there. All right, so I just got uh, two things I want to bring up. Um, hold up my notes here. 
So the question that this paper addressed, I'm talking about IO's 56 page paper, was supposed to answer, does Jesus Christ show us a pattern of himself partaking of the second death? All I found yeah. was one verse that IO presented to back up or prove that Jesus Christ endured the lake of fire at the cross. And that verse is 1 Peter 2.21, which I'll read. It says, For even, un for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. Now, the thing about that verse, and like I say, it's only one witness. It isn't two, and I don't even feel that that even answers the question or provides any clarity to Christ experiencing the lake of fire. Reason being is because let's read the verse right before that. First Peter 2.20, it says, For what glory is it if, when ye, are, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye, sh ye shall take it patiently. So that's when you do wrong and you suffer for it. Well, you should, right? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. So now the, the, the focus changes to doing good and still suffering for it. And that's where he comes in and talks about because Christ also suffered for doing right. So all I'm saying is that this only verse that he provided to back up that Christ suffered the lake of fire at the cross was this verse. And this verse doesn't prove a single thing to me. The only other thing that I want to bring up is, so what example would there be in the whole Bible to prove whether the elect experienced the lake of fire or not? And it's pretty clear, very clear. Turn to Daniel 3.25. We're all familiar with this, but I'm going to read two verses, 25 and 27. You know, I'm not reading the whole story because, like I say, we're all familiar with it. So this is verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have what? No hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had what? No power. Nor was their hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire that passed on them. Now, I'm pretty sure that nobody in the fellowship would argue that these three gentlemen that got tossed in this furnace are a type of the elect. And this verse clearly says the exact same thing that the book of Revelation says that we do not experience the lake of fire. That's two verses proving clearly. That we do not experience the lake of fire because this being tossed in that furnace is exactly what again another verse says being cast in the lake of fire here you're being cast in the furnace and they have no hurt so to me this is a perfect example of not experiencing the lake of fire now just like mike says i'm not saying we don't experience fiery charge but there's a big difference because one is reserved for the elect and a different one is reserved for those much, much later in the future, for those in the second resurrection. And, and that's all I want to share. Thank you, James. Um, the, to answer your first question, the, the paper that I read is not the 56-page paper. It's a, it's a separate paper called Did Christ uh, Partake of the Lake of Fire? So that's where he has all those... Uh, the, all those scriptures that prove that Christ did partake of the lake of fire. Now, uh, the 56 page part two paper is referring to that paper that I that I just read. Now, to answer your question on about Daniel 3:27, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they do they do typify the elect when they have overcome, and uh, I covered it. That the, the new man is not hurt of the lake of fire, only the old man. So I hope that's helpful. Go ahead, Mitch. A Amen, Victor. Um, I think the study you did tonight is what really makes the point is that we have to see the spirit behind the letters in every word. 
And when you don't see the spirit behind the letters, that's when we start dividing the word up. And, and the word is Christ. And we're told in 1 Corinthians, Christ is not divided. And all of these words are applicable in our own heavens, just like it says in Revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Where is Jesus Christ revealed? In your heavens. And there's no principle that tells us to leave any words out. In, in fact, we, we have in Revelation the very clear example of we're all blotted out of the book of life. And Exodus tells us that anyone who, one who sins is blotted out of the book of life. And we know that everyone sins and falls short of the glory of God. So who is it that's cast into the lake of fire? Anyone not found written in the book of life. So if we're going to be consistent and use the principles in a pattern of sound words, then you have to say, we have to all agree that we are blotted out of the book. And if you're blotted out of the book, well, what, what happens? You're cast into the fire. And, and what is blotted out of the book? It's, it's the sinful flesh. So that's how Christ was in the lake of fire is his, his body of flesh was not written in the book because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So as we faithfully adhere to these principles that Victor has laid out here, that's how we can see spirit behind every word, and we can see that every word applies to us. And then as he said, it becomes so profitable. There's so many details in Revelation that are beneficial to us to seeing what is in our heavens that needs to be dealt with, the fearful and the unbelieving and, and all of those things. So I'll leave it there, Victor. Thank, thank you, Mitch. We're going to go to Deb Zar. I, I forgot the order, so I'm just going down the list now. Hi, Deb. Hi. I'm reading um, uh, Tony's last email that I, I, I can account for. And it says, Christ is the plumb line. When we finally fill up what is lacking and the and the body of Christ is complete, the resurrection occurs. The measure of the statue of a man is perfected. That is what we are reaching towards. Uh, the hands of uh, Zerb, I can't pronounce it, have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For thou hast despised the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and they shall see the plumb line in the hand of uh, Zebulilla, I can't pronounce it, sorry, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro from the earth. And then he says, let us be reminded that others have gone from us before because they are too ashamed or afraid of going through the plague in order to reach that blessed and holy resurrection. Plumb line. They took away the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now this new doctrine is going way beyond and extending the resurrection to the unchosen and unfaithful and saying that we are hurt by the second death and that we measure um, the measure of a man is only complete with the uncalled. I, I don't understand what he's saying there. That is not what we're understanding. We're, we're not. What is he saying here? I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Why would he say, and extending the resurrection to the unchosen and faithful? Well, the unfaithful and the uncalled wasn't their doing. They're just following what the Lord is doing in their life. They're, they're, they're not chosen. They're, they're uncalled. But they will, be, they will see the, and bow like it says in Scripture, and they will be all in all. But they have to go through a lake of fire also because they will be they will walk in that. Um, I'm I'm so confused with all of this, and I I want I want to make sure I'm on the right right track. And, and I'm wondering if Tony is misunderstanding what we are understanding because I don't. Is he saying he's? It's making it sound like we have to go through the fire again and the lake of fire, or it's or. I, I'm so confused with what everybody's saying. I, I really am. Would, would you help me clarify this? And then also, um, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. And I'm, I'm so confused. I, I know what I know, but I don't know anymore. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what is, why would somebody say that? 
this new doctrine is going way beyond and extending the resurrections to the unchosen and the faith. Well, the resurrection, the, they will be resurrected. Are they saying that we're going to be in the fire again? Is that what they're thinking that we're saying? Go ahead, Mitch. Did, did you want to answer that? It's very, Peter says about Paul that he writes some things that are difficult to be understood. And that's what's going on is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it's a functional spiritual event that happens in the heavens of everybody. So when we start explaining the spirit behind the letters and how that spirit goes to everyone, it's natural that it creates confusion. And as Victor explained, it's we see the example in the disciples where they, they despise that word and they can't hear it. So what we're saying very plainly is that all the words are profitable for instruction in our own heavens, and they describe the process of salvation. And all the words of the sum of the word of God are in the lake of fire because it's the same fire as you see all throughout scripture. Now, what are, is he saying that, is he trying to say that, you know, the seven, you know, because it says, and this, with, uh, with those seven, are, is he trying to say that because seven uh, elders ha have not been convinced to, of this new doctrine, quote unquote, but, you know, it's the other four. And you know, I mean, is is that what he's coming up with? Because he's he's going through the number. Is that it's a, that's what he's saying? Well, there's seven of us left, and we don't believe this, so we're on the right track. I mean, is that what he's assuming? And then, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm finished. What we need to focus on is what the Word of God says, because it's a bottomless pit of reasoning and arguments against it. So what we did tonight is we just read the word and we're going line by line, precept upon precept. And when we focus on the truth, all the other stuff will move to the side. The well, hang on. I, I do understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with what Victor is saying. I'm just confused with how they're coming up with this understanding or this thought that this is how we think. Like this new doctrine uh, it's going way beyond the extending that resurrection is, to the unchosen and faithful are saying that we are hurt by this. I don't believe that nobody's ever said that we're hurt by this, by the second death. I, why are they coming? Why is they coming up with this? I don't get it. It's Lord. It's just, this is how the Lord works. And we've seen this many, many times before in opposition to the word. So we just keep focusing on the truth. We keep restating what the truth is, and eventually those things will dissipate. Mm -hmm. So it's it's well, exhausting. I mean, it's just exhausting reading all of these emails and seeing the arguments and the the you know. the harsh words and the bitterness and and it's like I don't know. It's it's it hurts me to see this going on. But I know what I know, and I mean, I, I've always thought that I've, I'm going through a fire because we are a body, and and we need to be ministered to just like the, re the rest of the, the world will be ministered to by us, but we're being ministered by each other right now through through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Christ himself who's the head, but we're not there yet. But I'm not I'm not ashamed of going through the lake of fire now. I don't feel hurt. I I feel count all things joy. You know, like I'm glad because I know all things work together for good. So that's not hurting me. So I don't see why I'm not hurt by by the second death. I'm not hurt by going through this. I'm happy. Well, well when it says not heard of, it, it's talking about the, you know the new man. So when the new man can dwell comfortably in the fire. And, yeah. and, and, and I see what you're saying too, is that you can rejoice in your sufferings because we know that they're producing good fruit, which is what we want. We're, we're, we're desiring the, the judgment now to be able to overcome. I just don't understand the big deal out of this. I just don't get it. Like what, I mean, I know we need to be sound in doctrine, but I just don't see 
why this is offensive to some. You can't. That's, yeah, the, the, it's it's offensive to to some because like the one that we read here, John six sixty and sixty one. Many, therefore, of his disciples. These are his disciples. These are these are his followers. These these are not people. The the Pharisees, when they heard this, they said, "This is a hard saying. Who can hear it?" That's what's happening right now when we say we are partakers of the second death, the lake of fire. They're saying, "This is a hard saying. Who can hear it?" When Jesus knew him in himself that his disciples murmured at him, he said to them, does this offend you? Does the word of God offend you? The whole, the, the thing that we are emphasizing right now is we do live by all the words of God. Mm -hmm. well, I, I agree with that. And I don't see how, Tony also sense. said something in, in the, I can't remember what he also said something about, um, we shouldn't, uh, something to do with, um, you know, we don't really eat all the, we don't really live by every word um, because we're only given certain amount. Well, yeah, th that certain amount is because we're still babes in Christ and we can't, ex you can't accept all the, the meat and the, you know, we're on milk doctrine. We can't accept the meat. Isn't that what it could mean too? You know, I mean, there's so many hidden thoughts. Because it says, um, man shall not live by bread alone. It's spiritual statement that reveals that man shall not live by every spiritual word, but by the sum of the God's word or every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, the same thing. It, it's just so much contradiction here. It, it's it's confusing, you know. And I and I know that, you know, they're going by the numbers, like the number 11 and then 7 and 4 and, you know, the minority. You know, but now I'm seeing that, you know, more and more people are coming to this understanding. Are we really on the right track? Because, you know, they're going on about, well, you know, many are called, few are chosen. So it's going to really come down to just a few. So it it's just all very overwhelming. And, and I I know I stand, I you know, it's almost to the point where sometimes you feel like I just want to give up and just not bother. You know, like just not even bother with with I, God forbid me for saying this, but you know, like it, it's so confusing that you, you almost feel like giving up. You know, like oh well, you know, let's let's not even have a body of Christ. Let's just you know, I'm going to go off on my own and just do the, my you know, like this is how people like Robin have left because they've been so misunderstood or or not given enough um, grace and mercy to you know, come to an understanding. So it's to the point where people, they want to leave because it's kind of like, it's too messy, you know? I'm not leaving, trust me, but it's like, it, you know, I could. I, I'm glad to hear that, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not leaving, but I'm I mean, I can, I mean, I can see you know, how it's people all... will. I can see how people can leave. Because well, yeah, yeah it's, and it's all the, the the Lord's working. I mean, yeah, he's shifting he's shifting his body right now. I mean, he he doesn't, you know, he's he's gonna harden those. He's gonna harden, and he's gonna give mercy to those. He's gonna he's gonna give mercy. It's it's all of him, and um, we're just thankful that you know we are given mercy right now. So we, we are not we are not hating them. So. No, I, I'm broken. I love these people, and I, I. Anyway, I'm done because I know I've talked too much. But I'm just so. Mm -hmm. This is really upsetting me. But I know what I know. But anyway, thank this you so much. Our, yeah, this is our trial. For yeah, sure. boy, exactly. is it ever. This is the fire. This is the fire right now. Yeah. It feels like this fire. Is fire. So, the word of God in our mouths is what's burning up the old man. Um, again, I'm just going down the list in order because I can't keep track of who's raising their hand when. Boyd? Go ahead, Boyd. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I want to say a number of things, and when I'm finished, uh, if anybody sees that I'm wrong in anything, please correct me. 
Uh, now, Deb, I, I want to say that I appreciate what you did yesterday also. I've all, you know, already told Teresa that, but I was impressed by what you did yesterday also. Very much impressed. And I appreciate what you did. Um, you were speaking about you're confused. Well, I don't think we are required to understand error of where it's coming from. We just need to understand the truth. And I'm, I'm going to make an analogy, and again, uh, for those of you all see where I'm in error, please point it out. The uh, uh, Secret Service of this country is tasked with not just protecting the United States, but also protecting our currency. And how are they trained to spot a counterfeit? They do not study the counterfeits. They study the real dollar bill. They don't care what the counterfeits look like. So when they look at a bill, they know what a real dollar bill looks like in minute detail. And if they see something that's not what they know is correct, then they know it's a counterfeit. So you don't have to try to understand what they're saying. At least I don't believe you. You're not required to do that. You know, not, God is not the author of confusion. So if you're confused, well, then so be it. Let yourself be confused and don't even try to understand what they're doing. Uh, I also want to say that I think what's happened is uh, uh, a spirit has come into the body through one particular person, and that person has turned backwards and has no longer uh, interpreting the word uh, through the spirit but using the letter. Well, we know that the letter kills. And he hasn't completely turned, but he has turned, and for many it's hard to see what has happened because he hasn't moved very far, but time will tell. Eventually, he's going to start taking steps in the wrong direction, and the further he goes, the more the people will see that he's going the wrong direction, and they're not going to have anything to do with it. Hopefully, that's what I'm hoping will happen. Uh, I'm actually hoping that this can all be reconciled very quickly and that nobody leave the body, absolutely nobody, that they will see the error that they are in. Um, and there was something else, but I can't remember what it is, so please, somebody... Uh, uh, correct me if I say anything that's not correct. I want to quote a verse that's a witness to what you're saying. In fact, it was in my mind that same analogy about the dollar bill, Boyd. Um, Romans 16, 19 says, For your obedience is known to all, so that, I, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. Said another way, set your mind on things above, not on, on things of the earth. The bottomless pit is called bottomless for a reason. There's an endless number of ways for the carnal mind to twist things and turn them and reason. But we're told to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. And an application of that is we have the principles of you live by every word. We have the principles of their spirit behind the letter. There's plenty of times I read a verse and I'm like, I don't see the spirit. Like, I, I don't see it. But I don't leave the principle. You wait. And eventually, over time, the Lord will, will open it up. But there's a big there's a big temptation to leave the principle when you come across a verse that was really puzzling. You can't figure out how on earth do I ever live that. Well, just, just wait. It'll it'll come. It'll 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 open up, and it has for us consistently uh, over time. Mitch, uh, can, can I? Sorry to interrupt, but can I get you to um, to to try and decipher what Tony means by what he's saying here. Now, no. this new doctrine is going way beyond yeah. extending. So, so, Deb, that's the very thing that we're saying we don't want to do. We don't want to try to figure out what they're saying. We're just saying this is the truth and that's what we're going to stand on. Okay. Because there's an endless number of twistings of it. But I, I, I'm, because I'm just thinking, is that what they're thinking we think? That you know that we're got to go through the fire again. Like that's the, something that Mike thought you were saying that we're going through the fire again, and and that you know this is kind of almost lasciviousness that you know. I I, I, I hear you, Deb. But we're we're consistently stating what we believe, and people are clearing that up. So if we okay. keep saying what we believe and we keep walking down this road, all that's eventually going to wash away. Okay. All right. I, also, I also like to point out that if there's anyone that thinks the error cannot come into the body through the titular head, 
we all know who that person is, the one that started all this many years ago, that he cannot be in serious error. Well, if you turn to Galatians 1, verse 8, it says, But though we, this is Paul speaking, though we, that's including himself, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, past tense, let him be accursed. So it is possible. Paul admitted, even he himself, he turns away from the true gospel that he's already preached, then he is to be accursed. So yes, it can happen even at the very top because our top is not a man. It's Christ. He is the head. And no matter how high any of us are in this body or appear to be, we are not the head. Only Christ is. And we're to follow him and no yep. human being alive today. Well, it does say even the elect will be deceived, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm it's just a, trying to, I'm yeah. just I know I'm I'm just trying to figure out what they think we're thinking. And I'm trying to figure out that's not what we're thinking. That's not what we're saying. And it's Exactly. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're making a claim that's just not true. And they have not come up with the evidence to show that their claim is true. They're making false accusations against these four uh, elders. And uh, they need to come up with evidence if they're going to do that. If you're going to claim something about somebody, where is the evidence? And I haven't heard that yet. I'm, I'm willing to listen, but I, I didn't hear it yesterday. I love it when you said uh, the Secret Service knows the minute detail of of the of the real deal. Yes, and, they're trying uh, to do that. Yeah, so you know our enemy is subtle. Satan, Satan is the, a subtle beast, so he doesn't twist the scriptures, you know, blatantly. He twists it, you know. Just a little bit, <laughs> and if you there you go, just a slight twist. You know, what's the big deal? Don't make a big deal out of this. It's not that big a deal. Just let it go. No, we can't let it go. Yeah, because if, if, he, he twists it and he twists it a little bit more, and a little bit more, a little bit more, like boiling a frog. You raise the temperature slowly, and eventually you're all twisted out of shape and don't even realize what happened to you. Amen. Yeah, it's it's the leaven that we need to see, and. Um, Lord willing, we, we will continue to see. Um, and little so bit leaven leavens the whole lump. You've got to clean it all out. You can't allow any leaven in. It's already started. We, we can see that. I mean, some people believe their teachings already. So it's a sad thing, but, you know, that's how the Lord is working it. Go ahead, Mitch. Um, are you done, Boyd? Yes, I am. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. So I know I, I think you had your hand up early, Brian. I'll try to remember the order when I can. When I forget, I'll just go through the list. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I, I was noticing in, uh, like very early on, okay, uh, one of the uh, uh, emails that uh, uh, Pete Wilson sent, he said there's no such thing as uh, the second resurrection. That, that that there's only the first resurrection. Uh, also, the, the, cause, yes, because it's not in scripture. It's not. It doesn't say that. But Dave Rogers said it's, it is indicated. Now, if if, if also because that would be not pattern. That wouldn't be the pattern of of of, of 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 proper you know words. If it's not in the Bible, we shouldn't be calling it a second resurrection. And also, you wouldn't call it the first death. It would, it would always be the second death. So is that what, what you're trying to say? Hello? You still there? Do you want to answer, Victor, or do you want me to? Um, yeah, um, the, the second. Yeah, it's again, the, the Bible is signified. It's, it's really, really locked up. It, it's sealed. Go ahead, Mitch, because uh, there's some background noise here. <laughs> yeah, so the first point was that the word second resurrection isn't in the Bible, right? So we shouldn't use second resurrection. Okay. Yeah. Certainly, there is an order in which men are raised. And there's other yeah. verses that make that clear with a pattern of sound words. 
Paul mm-hmm. says in First Corinthians, each man is raised in his own, each in his own order. We also have in the Old Testament the 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 the, the harvests of the year, the three harvests. So we have Christ the first fruits, the faithful elect, then the rest. So clearly there is an order to the salvation of all men. Yes. You know, we, Lord willing, if we're faithful to it to the end now, and then the rest that come later. Mm-hmm. But there's some very powerful symbolism behind the words first resurrection. And what we're trying to connect it to is the better resurrection, be, meaning the resurrection of Christ within you, yes. the hope of glory. And what comes to all men, the one event, is Jesus Christ coming into their heavens. And that, that is the real meaning of resurrection. Yes. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah, so you can't call it a second resurrection. It's still, it's one re- resurrection. It's called yeah. it's one resurrection because it's one body being raised. Because okay. right now there's only so many in the body of Christ, right? But of in the end, everyone's joined into one family. Yes, one family. We're, we're, we're fellow heirs, and that's why we believe it's so important to use the pattern of sound words because it puts the emphasis on the unity of everyone that comes in, even though there's clearly an order in which they come in. At the end of the day, they all get the same reward. I understand. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, Brian. Um, I know your hand up was early, Ernesto. Hi, Ernesto. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I just I just wanted to share. Well, first I wanted to um kind of help answer Deb's question a little bit, um, trying to understand like why are they saying, why do they think we're saying what they think we're saying? So, you know, first of all, we, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a spiritual thing. You know, we're, we're, if you notice, we're not saying that there isn't an outward application, which is what everyone says that we're saying that, that there is no outward application. No, there is an outward application, but you know, what has been revealed, which has not been spoken about because this has not been spoken about. What has been revealed is the spiritual application of what we've been taught about the outward application. So we're not fighting against the idea that there's only an outward application. We're adding to the fact that there's a spiritual application, which, you know, we're talking in spirit. So the first thing is that the carnal mind cannot receive the things of the spirit of God. So it doesn't matter how many times you say we're talking about the spirit, they're going to make it physical because if you don't understand the spirit is going to always be ordinal. It's going to always be first as in, you know, first in the number of series, you know, it's, it's not that it's first, you know, the number one is the number of unity. Resurrection is, is the is the word that means life. So first resurrection means unity through God, to God, our father, through Christ and the knowledge of God. So everyone's going to get that. So that process is called first resurrection. It's, it's the process. So it's not the name, you know, it, it's the name of the process. It, it, it's not the number of, of, a, of an event. So that's one. And the, the second thing is that, you know, to the pure, to the pure or things are pure and to the unpure or things are unpure. So if the carnal mind can understand the purity of the spirit of the scriptures, then they're going to apply their impure carnal understanding to it. So no matter how many times you say it's spiritual, they're gonna say, but you're trying to say that you gotta do it twice. But so you're saying that you could just turn grace into lasciviousness, but that's not what we're saying. The fact that they think that way shows that those ideas are already implanted into their minds. Their minds are already undefiled. That's why there's so much confusion on that side. Because if you notice, everyone who came to witness is not confused. And they all say the same thing. Isn't this what we believe this whole time? Everyone says the same thing. So 
it's just that they they making the spiritual component of it very unpure and what what that impurity does it, it mixes the physical application with the spiritual application so that now they're comparing physical with spiritual that that's what happens when you mix a pure thing with an impure thing um uh, the other thing i wanted to say was you know there was a lot of talk about the reward but what about our reward we're going to get to rule over people what about our reward you know you know and i i recently shared that parable with, with matthew the, the, uh, the book of matthew matthew 20. Uh, i don't know if anyone read it but i'll just briefly discuss it really quickly uh, so it's the the parable of the um the laborers the laborers says for the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right i will give you and they went their way again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise and about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them why stand ye here all the day idle they say unto him because no man has hired us he said unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatever is right that you shall receive so when so when evening was come the lord of the vineyard said unto his steward call the laborers and give them their hire beginning from the last unto the first and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour they received every man a penny but when the first came they supposed that they should have received more and they likewise received every man a penny and when they had received it they murmured against the good men of the house saying these last these last men have wrought but one hour and thou has made them equal to us which have borne the burden and heat of the day but he answered one of them and said friend i do thee no wrong did not thou agree with me for a penny take that thine is and go thy way i will give unto this last even as unto thee it is not lawful for me to do what i will with my own is your eye evil because i am good so the last shall be first and the first last for many be called but few chosen so all these laborers all these laborers were, were brought into the vineyard at different times and some of them were there the whole entire day and the laborers all get the same reward and that is the same thing as the first resurrection if you notice they all get one penny everybody gets one the number one the number one is unity so there's there's one resurrection the resurrection is jesus christ and like mitch said the whole process of god bringing mankind into himself is the resurrection of one body so no matter so this goes into the the idea of the lake of fire and us you know somehow being better than the people that are in the lake of fire our reward is that we're suffering now that we get to labor from the morning until the night and you know what if brothers come in later and brothers come in last we might we we who are first were able to endure what they are going to go through and the payment is the same and we should rejoice in that we should just rejoice in that and here's a here's a and that's that's mercy and the reason i bring that up is because i was thinking about um what is it luke 12 is luke, luke 12 or let me see luke 12 48 oh there we go 12 48 okay so this this is another parable Here's another parable, uh, verse 42, verse 42. It says, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes shall find so doing of a truth. I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. 
But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looks not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will call him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So the servants who were sinning, but did not know that they were sinning, which is most of humanity, will receive fewer stripes. If you go to Luke, Luke 23, 3, Luke 23, 3. Is it no 2334? Sorry. 2334. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Those people did not know that they were sinning against Christ. And yet their stripes would be less than what stripe than what Christ received. Should Christ be upset about that? Should we be upset that we're going through a lake of fire now for the sake and mercy of others that are going to go through it later? I think great is our reward now while we sit with Christ ruling over our flesh and helping each other go through this fire so that we can forgive them for they know not what they did in this life in the age that's coming. So that's just that's all I wanted to share. Amen. Amen. Uh, very well said. Talk for the spirit he gives you to say it in. Um, I do want to read four, uh, four verses that just confirms what you're saying. This is Luke 17, 7 to 10. Um, and I did a study on this a while back, um, and this really hit me hard about how we get our spirit of, you know, of pride and and focus on ourself under control. And it says, but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to eat. Will he not rather say to him, make ready wherewith I may eat and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward you shall eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, when you have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And Paul says the same thing. Um, if I do it willingly, I have a reward. This is 1 Corinthians 9, 17. Can you pull that one up, please? 1 Corinthians 9, 17. It says, for this thing... For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a it's a dispensation, a stewardship is committed to me. So we are drugged to Christ. The Lord is causing us to do this. And our reward is Jesus Christ in us. That is the treasure hidden in the field. And that's the same reward that everyone gets. And we should think of ourselves like this. We are unprofitable servants. We're just doing what we were commanded to do. And we think that way. It makes us so much more humble. We don't think much of ourselves, but we think others better than ourselves. And it's just a very peaceful spirit to have. So thank you very much, Ernesto. Did you want to say anything, Victor? Uh, no, no, Mitch. You can, you can go to the next person. Teresa? You there, Teresa? Yes, sorry. My iPad keeps jumping in and out. Sorry about that. Um, I did want to um, talk to Deb if she's still on the call. But Deb, if, you know, if there's confusion that you are having in your heavens, just look at the emails. And you don't have to read through every single email. I know it's a lot that's been going back 
um, being sent out to everybody. But you'll see emails from Ernesto and Mitch and Victor and Pete, and they all keep saying the same thing. They're telling you exactly the words that are in Scripture, and they're quoting Scripture all the time. And then I'll pull up an email from Tony or you know, someone that believes that what Victor and them are saying is heresy. And you'll have, I, I think it was an email that Tony had sent out yesterday or today, and he said, he said some other things, and then he's like, yes, every, all the words in Scripture are spiritual. And then the very next word he said, but. Mm -hmm. And the minute he said the word but, he negated what he just said. So what he is in fact saying is, yes, Scripture says it's all spiritual, but, and, you know, so when I start to see things like that, I don't typically even continue reading through that email because I know that what's about to be spoken is not true because what he just said was true, that, that man shall not live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and then his next word is but. And so I just kind of close out of that email and move on. Um, I do. I mean, I, I get it. I, I trust me. I get what we're saying. I'm confused how they are interpreting what we're saying and twisting it. I just, I'm confused how they have captured that. That's my confusion. I'm not confused just, with what's being said or what, what yeah, I believe. Just no, Deb. It is not Mike. It is not Tony. It is not any sure. single one person. It is an evil spirit that the Lord yeah. has sent into this camp. I understand that. Yeah. And if we grasp that, we cannot have anger or hatred one towards another because we understand that it's the Lord doing all of this. Yeah, very true. I, I'm and just so it. If you hear the voice, even if you don't understand everything. Mm -hmm. That Victor might say, um, or that Mitch might say, as long as you don't have to understand everything, but you will hear the voice of the true shepherd, and that's yeah. what you hold fast to. It doesn't no, like, matter, and that's like I mean, that email that I sent out. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the fellowship, how good of friends you are with anybody. <laughs> flesh and blood profits nothing. Don't let those friendships stop you from following the true shepherd because all you're doing is giving up your crown and our reward is Jesus Christ and that is all that we should be seeking after in this life. Oh, I, I agree. I I totally, totally understand Mitch and and Io and all of the, I mean, I get it. I, I, I don't question them. I'm just questioning the story the spirit, I guess, of the confusion. One that thing I want you to, yeah, and I understand, I hear that confusion on the other side, and there's a lot of anger and hateful words that, that I've heard the other side speak. They're I mean, not if you, speaking I in love stand continually. On, stand on the truth. I'm not standing with, with the Paulos or Paul or, you know, I'm not of the church of them. I'm, I'm the church of Jesus Christ. So leaving this company of, of men is hurtful, but I'm not ashamed or afraid to do it. You know, like if it has. Yeah, to and be the, done, the one thing that. Done. Yeah, and take a look at something that Ernesto sent out today. It was Q and A that Mike did six years ago, just six years ago. I read it, and he's answering somebody's question. And if you look at the very end of that. Mike himself says, yes, all partake of the first resurrection. Every single one partakes of the first resurrection. And then um, Steve posted the audio for Sunday. Now listen to what Mike is saying now in answer to a question that I posed to him at the end of the study. I, in fact, ask if all if Christ if Jesus Christ who says he is the resurrection i said doesn't that mean and i was asking mike i said doesn't that mean that all partake of the first resurrection and mike's answer to me was absolutely not 
and it's just six years he went from saying the truth to not telling the to to completely reversing what he said six years ago and you know I know that he'll say that he's grown but is that what scripture tells us does Jesus Christ say that he is the resurrection and that all will be that God will be all in all that means that all partake of the first resurrection so and that's why I said in my email just everyone don't go by your fleshly feelings about how you feel towards someone this is a spiritual war that is taking place right now try the spirits go to the Word of God and see what scripture tells us and that's all I have to say yeah no I, I agree I mean leaving Babylon I left a career I left a ministry I left my singing I was you know so I'm I know what it's like to leave the things of the world behind so this is no different um, it's not a hardship it, it truly isn't thank you Teresa and Deb we appreciate y'all very much um, Anthony thanks Teresa and Deb yeah I feel, I feel for everyone I, I think it's um yeah a real challenging time a real earthquake um, yeah uh, and it sounds like you most of you have made your minds up which I think is really good I think that's the reason that that we we all were drawn to this truth originally you know myself uh, about six years ago we're all passionate about the truth so it's good to make up your mind on things and I, I think that's that's a really important thing to do because you get clarity and, and peace of mind um, so yeah I honestly wish you all the best in in the future I think it's going to be interesting the and sorry just to clarify what you were saying about you know us not um, providing any certainty or or answering any any questions um, I, I guess the one thing for me and this is just me speaking personally yeah I think you uh, I think you're gonna have a lot of um, a lot of difficulty in the future holding fast to that very strict is was and will be application without taking into consideration the sum of thy word which is truth the sum of the story of revelation and I guess the the only thing that's holding me back from saying yes this is all brilliant is the fact that this is was and will be application of the lake of fire contradicts a few verses and those verses are revelation 2 11 he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit has said unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He that overcometh shall not be a hurt of the second death. Um, so the contradiction I feel there is that we all agree that the elect are not hurt of the second death, which is the lake of fire. Yet this is sort of talking about this idea that if the elect is one vessel, vessel the old man and the new man in the same vessel, that vessel has to be cast into the lake of fire. So Jesus Christ in us is cast into the lake of fire. But there's more, so that there's also another verse, Revelation 20, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So, so are death and hell already cast into the lake of fire? But then there's a third difficult verse, which I, I struggle to get my head around. And struggle to, to get this is was and will be application to make sense it says and so and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that's revelation 20 verse 15 and so ever and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire but you're saying that the elect is cast into the lake of fire so then the elect aren't written in the book of life and then I've heard the argument um, from Ernesto and, and Victor and, and Mike that saying, you know, well, it's not the it's not the new man that that's hurt. It's not the new man that's cast into the lake of fire. But yeah, I don't know. Like, can we can we can we separate ourselves? Can we separate the new man from the old man? Or are we in one vessel now? 
being being tried in in this time. Uh, and I guess the other challenge will be well, and you'll see this as the years go on. If you stick true to this is was and all the application, well, how, how do you then? What's the is application for the Garden of Eden? I mean, do you honestly believe that we're all in the Garden of Eden now, eating of the fruit? What's the is application of Noah's Ark? I mean, is it raining outside? Is it? <laughs> are we all well, building literal well, boats? So, well, so the application is really challenging to say, well, look, take a look at the sum of thy word. The sum of thy word is truth. Sorry, much. Let me ask you a question. So when we talk about living by every word, it's by the spirit of the word, not the letter. So you ask about the application of Noah's Ark. Of course, we're not building Noah's Ark, you know, but the the Ark is what saved the people from the flood, and that's what Christ does. So Christ is the Ark that we're brought into. So when you see the spirit behind the letters, that's how it applies, not, not the physical of it, but the spirit behind it. So, so what was your question, sorry? I, I say, can you see how... It's the spirit behind the letters of the Old Testament. The Gard of, Garden of Eden, I mean, the garden is the setting where all that happens. And of course, we're all in the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the law. And the tree of life is Christ. And we do eat of the law first. And what happens when you eat of the law? Paul says, you know, the law came to him and he died. It made sin exceedingly sinful. So the way that Adam and Eve knew that they were naked is they ate of the tree, they ate of the fruit that the Lord said, don't eat of. That was the first law given. So when we see the spirit behind the letters, then it applies. When you see it according to only the, the physical outward, it, the letter kills and we can't see anything. Oh, I fully agree with you, Mitch. But, but what, what when that spirit contradicts with, the, with some verses? Surely we're, we're told to discern scriptures and discern and try the spirits. And no scripture of its own private interpretation. You know, we can there, there are many, many, many spirits out there interpreting the Bible. The, 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 the Babylonian church, they believe, you know, that there's a trinity. That's a spirit interpreted from the words. This is exactly what we're dealing with. We are trying to seek the truth, and the truth will set you free. But the truth is the sum of thy word. So so the so when we when we are interpreting this. We've got to be very careful that we don't contradict certain verses, and and, right. and those three verses: Revelation two eleven, Revelation twenty fourteen, Revelation twenty fifteen. Um, this Ecclesiastes three one: To everything there is a season and a time of purpose under heaven. Um, yeah, I, I I I haven't got clarity, and I've asked a few times. I sent a few letters to you. Like I, I don't know where that contradiction. How can you explain that contradiction away? Maybe start with Revelation 2015. And so whoever, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the fire. Sure, that's a great one. Let's go through that one. Okay, so before I do that, I want to give one example to the principle. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, we're told that we're not appointed to wrath. And this was actually the very reason that Mike and Ray split 14 years ago. Is Ray said, the elect do not go to the wrath of God because it says the elect are not appointed to wrath. So Mike explained to him back then, well, Ray, we're also told in Ephesians 2 that we're children of wrath as everyone else, as others. So first you go through the wrath so that you then don't go through the wrath. That's how you overcome, because it's the old man that's destroyed. And that was where Mike explained to Ray that we have to partake of the seven last plagues in Revelation, because that's what destroys the old man. So now to, to Revelation 2015, which you asked about, it says, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So let's see how Christ says it. Christ says, if you don't believe in him, you're condemned already. But if you believe in him, you have life. Well, do we believe in him at first? No. And we're condemned and we're judged. And then that is what brings us to believe in him. 
So what's been taught in this fellowship for many, many years, and Mike has taught this himself, is <laughs> everything the scripture says you're not going to do, you do. Like where it says, if you're not going to be heard of the second death, it's because you are at first. You, you're blotted out of the book before you're written into the book. And that's how we understand the mystery. There's only two men in all of scripture, the old man and the new man. All the judgment and the wrath is on the old, and all the good things are for the new. And when you hold those principles consistent through all the books, then they all line up. Then they all make sense. Hey Mitch, do you have the verse that says um, everyone that sins is uh, blotted out of the book? It's, I think it's Exodus, isn't it? It's um, Exodus 32:33. So, um, Anthony, I hope this helps you. Um, so, Exodus 32:33 says, "And the Lord says to Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, all are blotted out of the book." First, that's what Mitch is saying. So I hope you can reconcile that why we are cast into the lake of fire because he has blotted out us out of the book first, and then we he cast us into the lake of fire, and the, and death, the carnal mind, is destroyed through the lake of fire. Then he adds us to the book. So I hope that's something that helps you reconcile that in your heavens. Will you read 1 Corinthians 3.15 as well, Victor, to kind of bring this all home, how we are saved by that lake of fire? 3.15? Yeah. Yeah. So if any man's word shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Was that it's helpful, like Anthony? Lake of fire. Hmm? It saved by fire or saved by the lake of fire? It's the same, yeah. It's because this, this is where the line upon line, precept upon precept comes in. So we followed how we're blotted out of the book. We know we sinned. And where are those who are not written in the book go? The lake of fire. So that's how you can connect the sin that, that gets you into the fire and the lake of fire with is the same sin that's burned up that Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians 3. It's the same fire Christ is talking about in Gehenna. That if you if you don't cut your hand off because it sins, you're cast. Your whole body's cast in. Well, our whole body is cast in because we don't believe on Christ at first. You see that that's how the dream is won. It's all this, all the book is saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over in just different symbols in different ways. And you know you have to keep in mind we 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 thought. You know, Mitch and I thought before that there was a second resurrection. We've used that term before. <laughs> and we, we need to correct that error. We need to correct that error. We just need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. We need to humble ourselves and tremble with his words. If we see ourselves in error, we need to correct it. We, we need to look within first. And then we, we are commissioned to to uh, give mercy to others. We have com we are commissioned to, to be the lake of fire for others. Did, did you have any other questions, Anthony? Uh, yeah, I, I've got a lot of questions. I know I'm conscious of time. Um, just maybe one thing you could clarify is the elect. Is it one mm -hmm. vessel with the new man and the old man in it? E yeah, everyone is, until they shed their sinful flesh, Everyone is in the old man and the new man, but uh, only the elect is is given is given the uh, the down payment of the spirit. All other people are are still carnal. It's um they're they're not even got given the down payment. Well, so you well, yeah. believe no, you believe I'm you sorry? are you believe that you are elect. I, I do believe that I am elect. 
And so you have, still have the old man in you. Yes, yes, we 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 do believe in that. Uh, we we um, we read that in First uh, Corinthians fifteen. The are you the new man now? Um, I'm both. I'm both. And both are in the lake of fire. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the old man is cast into the lake of fire. So where does the new man go when that happens? So um, where is that verse, Mitch? Uh, I must, I must decrease. So the, the way it works, Anthony, is the new man is judging the old. That's Christ in us, judging all of the the sin left in us. So they're operating at the same time. We're just a vessel of clay, right? Our bodies are just a vessel. But inside of us is the great war between those two, Christ when he comes within us and all the sinful flesh and the carnal mind. But at first, we're a marred vessel. And as Paul says, nothing good dwells in me. So until Christ comes with the down payment of the spirit, there is no new man. It's just all old completely. Then once the new comes in, now there's this great battle, which is what the entire book of the Bible is about, is that battle, which eventually results in the old man, the new man rising and the, and the old being cast into all the different judgments, Lake of Fire, Gehenna, there's the Cauldron of Fire, there's many of them. Yeah, so, so John the Baptist says he must increase talking about Jesus and I must decrease. And if we have Jesus in us, that's what we say. Jesus must increase in us and our old man must decrease. So it's it's a process that just like what we bear out today, tonight, that uh, that's why Jesus said, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. It's, it's, it's a process. You have to go through the process. But by, but by all the words of God, we start as the old man, everything the old man, like like Mitch said, 100% old man. And then when we're given the, the down payment, then we increase in faith, we increase in hope, and we increase in, in love. And um, yeah, Very interesting. So, so the new man is complete. The new man is complete because it's Christ. He's complete in us. No, um, th that's, that's why it's called earnest or down payment. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not going to be completed until we shed this uh, sinful flesh. But you just said the new man is the one doing the, um, the, the work, one doing the burning out. What about yes. lacking behind of the afflictions of Christ? Is Christ complete now in us? Is the new man no. complete? No, we can't say that. We, we, we can't say we, we have the fullness of the spirit now. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Uh, Anthony asked a question. Um, he he put some scripture out there, and one of it was uh, at First Titus something, and it talks about um, you know which one you're talking about, Anthony. You asked for a clarity on on that. The it, first resurrection it past due. It you know I can't remember the, the I can't find your question anymore. But do you know what one you mean? Do you remember what you said? Um, yeah, in Titus or Revelation? Titus. About, um, you know, the us saying that the first rec res resurrection has passed already. We, I mean, oh, nobody, that, nobody's that saying it. that. Nobody's saying that. I don't believe anybody's saying that the resurrection has is already passed. Okay. Yeah, it's it's that's what dying daily is. Victor just read it. He must increase, I must decrease. So because we have a down payment of the spirit, view it like a glass. There's only call it 10% Jesus, 90% carnality. And over time, the Lord increases our faith. Over time. He refines our faith and it grows. And as that faith grows, it overcomes more and more of the old man and is driving him out more and more with more and more dominion. Until eventually at the very end, if we make it faithful to the end of this life and the Lord grants us that full measure of faith at the very end in the resurrection, then 
we're completely full. God is all in all. He's 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 completed us. But now the work is is just going on. And what's the where history? Is the scripture? My husband wants to know the where the scripture is is was and will be that mentions is was and will be. Oh, there there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. But um, the the actual the uh, four beasts uh, four beasts uh, with eyes within. And it's 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 a really beautiful scripture because uh, it says you know it emphasizes again that we we should look within and and before the throne where is that four eight revelations four eight and the four beasts had each of them six wings above him and they were full of ice within. So we need to look within in spirit. And they rest not day and night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So that's just that's just one one of the many yeah. scriptures that says is, was, and will be. Yes, thank you. It's also Revelation 1.8. 1, 1.8? 8. 1, 8. Yeah. Yeah, so I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending says the Lord. So this is the Lord we're talking about and his words, which is, we need to apply the is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So is that good, Deb? Oops, I, gotta, hold on, I think I muted her again. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Yeah, that was really interesting. Good, good yeah, point. Says, thank you. Good. Um, going on about the e Adam and Eve and the garden, I had my Adam and Eve garden thing. When I realized that I was uh, a beast and that I was not made perfect, that was my is experience. When I yeah, realized yeah. I was naked. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, there's so many um, spiritual symbols in the. Uh, <laughs> in with adam and eve i mean it's a symbol of the godhead the, the god the father and and the eve coming out of god is is a symbol of our lord jesus christ and um that's how you uh, re rebuke the doctrine of the trinity you just if you know the symbols you, you can you can show them but you can obviously you can't make them accept what you're showing them. It's the it's the Holy Spirit's work. We just we just need to show them. And um, yeah, that's such, such a good point. And that even in the Garden of Eden, you know, the Lake of Fire. Uh, sorry, not the Lake of Fire. The tree, the tree of life, was guarded mm -hmm. by the flaming sword, wasn't it? And so yeah. with, Christ, with Christ and us, we've got we've got life. We've got complete life. We we um, Christ is complete in us now. Is that is that is that? What, no, what it's, it's 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 always a down payment. Okay. We don't have the fullness. We have the spirit. We have the mind of Christ, but we don't have the fullness of it yet. Christ was given the spirit without measure. That's okay. the difference between him and us. So what do we, we have? We have a down payment of the spirit. What does that mean? So like when you buy a house, you don't pay for it all at once. You, if it's a two hundred thousand dollar house, you put down twenty thousand. So the Lord has given us twenty thousand of the Spirit out of two hundred thousand, and then every year He gives us a little more and a little more until it's done. So the new man is just a a, a ten percent of the full man. Yes, He's only partly here. Right. So the new man isn't Christ. It's a it's a fraction of Christ. Well. It, yeah. He, the Lord gives, again, I'm using the biblical terminology, the Lord gives faith in measures. Okay, so he, must, he must increase, we must decrease. He doesn't come to us all at once. That's just... Yeah. So, but then, yeah, even our Lord didn't acknowledge that, you know, he has sin, you know, he was made sin. He says, why do you call me good? No one is good but God. It's because he was bearing the sinful flesh 
But um, when when he was on the cross uh, before he died, he said, I, "It is finished." Now he, he his his uh, example is finished. We need to follow him, take up our cross, and follow him. And we we've shown hopefully that taking up and um, being crucified, die the death of the cross is what's it's really signified. It's really a parable of the lake of fire, going through the lake of fire. That's what we're hoping we're showing and um, will be received. And Victor, I just like to say one thing. Yeah. Scripture tells us that um, Jesus was perfected on the third day. So Jesus was perfected in the resurrection. And that's what we will be too. We will continue to battle our carnal mind. Um, until we take our last breath, and it's only when we're resurrected will we be like Christ, and we will have the fullness of Christ at that time. That is correct, right, Victor and Mitch? Yes, yes, Teresa. Thank you. Yep, that's what um, that's what we uh, would say. Go, go ahead. Sorry, there yeah, you go. Do we do we dwell do we dwell in the fire in the fullness of Christ? In the well, we, when you so when the elect are dispensing the fire in the future, the fire is in their mouth, like it says in Jeremiah. So at first you're heard of the fire, and then you can dwell in the fire, dispense the fire, and it doesn't burn you anymore because you've already, where lack of wood, the fire goes out. You know, there's no more wood to burn. And that's that wood hand stubble, Anthony, that's being burned up inside of us, our old man. It's right. burned up on the new man. Yep, the new man is burning the old with the fire of God. That's how it is. But the new man is not complete yet. No. He's being formed. No. It, but the new man, once we've overcome in the resurrection, when we're when we are 100% Christ in us. That's why we're not hurt in that when that second group, that, well, I should say that third harvest, Christ is the first fruit, the second harvest is Christ at his coming, and then the third harvest, that's why when they're going through the lake of fire, that's why we are not hurt because we are completely 100% the new man at that point because we've been resurrected and we are as Christ at that point. There is no more carnal mind in us at that point anymore. That's right. That's right. All right. Yeah, we, we do our weeping and gnashing of teeth right now. <laughs> yeah, amen. So that, so that we will be merciful to those who will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. Lord willing, in the, in the third harvest. You know, let's try to get to a couple other folks here. I know it's kind of getting late here. Um, we, we can talk more, Ant, about whatever questions you've got. Diana? Oh, yeah. This is this is just my condensed version that made the light bulb go off in my head. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Satan, you know, where does he dwell? You know, yeah. we know where he dwells. And yeah. how do we kill him? It says he's thrown in, he's cast into the lake of fire. That's where he's killed. Um, that's plainly stated in Revelations. That 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 point there just hammered it home for me. And am I wrong? You're right. We're okay. all of our... So that's the only way you kill Satan, correct? That's right. That's right. He's got up in the lake yeah. of fire. Okay. Then that's happening now, right? He's being killed in my lake of fire inside of me. That's right. Because okay. we're called children of the devil. He says, I'm you're clear. of your father the devil and his works you do. Well, it's how do you... clear now. <laughs> Standing on a seat of glass. Amen, sister. Right. Laura's had her hand up for a long time, I think. Hi, Laura. Hey, Laura. Hi. Oh, hold on, sorry, I just have to get back to my notes. And thank you, Diana, we really appreciate it. 
Uh, yeah, I had um, a couple of things that came to mind. Um, and one of them was that the Lord had been wrestling with the same question that um, James had. And he showed me an example in the parable of Jesus' life that shows he went to the lake of fire without sinning. So Revelation 21.8 says, The people are cast into the lake of fire. And 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So the example in Luke 22.42 shows Christ was fearful of the cross and overcame in the one breath through love, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. So when Christ said, not my, wills, but not my will but yours, and then lived that out, his flesh was overcome, but he was not hurt because his desire was in line with God's will. So then another way of describing the lake of fire is abiding in God, which is abiding in love. Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. And 1 John 4, 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us, God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. And I just, this is the gospel of the good news. I love that. I love yeah, that. I think it's a good point that it was Christ's flesh that was fearful. I mean, the flesh doesn't want to die, and that's what his full measure of the spirit overcame. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he knew, he knew before he was going to get crucified. <laughs> and he was, you know, he was shaking. He was shaking. Mm. And, it's the, he, and it's another thing I've noticed is that with the lake of fire, our temptation is to focus only on the uh, the negative aspects. Well, what we, we perceive in our flesh to be the negative aspects of fire in terms of judgment. But fire is also mercy. Like it provides light and warmth and purification and it cauterizes wounds, it heals them up. It's just we need to remember the the, the good and you know, God is fire. So yeah. Oh thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what the the flesh obviously it recoils from the fire. The flesh when it hears fire, oh obviously you run. <laughs> but but when you when your new man understands that it purifies you, like you said, uh, we dwell in the fire. We comfortably dwell in the fire, and um, that's what I'm hoping is happening in in our heavens right now. The God's consuming fire is consuming our old man little by little. And um, thank you for those uh, beautiful uh, verses, um, Laura. Praise God. Angel? Um, so many people um, before me have really said what God has placed in my heart and mind. Uh, several scriptures. Uh, Teresa, again, um, you have really elaborated on a lot of scriptures that I wanted to, to share, but I would only be a witness to what you've already shared. And because it's late, I just won't go over much, but I want to share um, one that Anthony just, I think it was Anthony, and maybe I'm wrong, but someone just stated, and it's with uh, Romans 12 and, and 2, and it's the renewing of our minds. Um, this is not something that we do, although God says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is what is that that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, King James Version, but we are not the ones that renew our minds, although we think we are, but it is something that has to take place because until we are in our spiritual vessels, as long as we're in our earthly vessels, as long as we're in the flesh, um, we will contend with the old and new. And so uh, I, I was blindsided, honestly, Sunday, when I signed on to the webinar and heard what I heard. And I called and talked to Mike and uh, won't really talk about that conversation until I go back and listen to the Saturday um, audio and, and read over some things. But I will share this. What I understood um, several years ago and what I understand now is what I agree with. And this is why I'm on this study um, for it is once to die spiritually and naturally. And um, I think we have if first I really read what Teresa said on the 
the group list and I was like, wow, this is what I really think is the problem. It's just a misunderstanding of tomato, tomato. But then I, I went to the source and I spoke with Mike. And um, again, I really don't want to repeat some of the things that we discussed until I go back and listen to, to everything from the beginning. Uh, Mike did share this with me, and I don't mind because it was mentioned in the study that several years ago when he was like so many, all of us, not so many, all of us started out as babes. Um, he's matured and he has grown and God has, you know, given him an increase in knowledge and wisdom and what he had written, which Ernesto pointed out on the group email. Um, he didn't go back and change that, which I was wondering why he wouldn't if he changed his, you know, his thought process. Why would you not go change that? Well, maybe in the process of being so busy and attending to so many of the sheep, he just didn't think about it. But he admitted that, yes, he did write that, but his understanding is different now. Well, I understand and receive what was written the first time. And, and that's what I know. But I will go back and seek out the scriptures or search the scriptures, searching for only the truth um, and listening and seeking the true shepherd and all of this. And I don't know who said it when I first signed on because I signed on a little later. But I believe um, as Sue and Jonathan and so many of us that just want the truth um, are stating and seeking is that I hope in the end of all of this, God's will is done. And I hope and pray that God's will is that we are unified and we all grow and learn from all of this. But um, I just don't agree at this time with Mike um, and the seven elders. I, I, I don't. Thank, thank you for expressing that. So we really appreciate it. And um, we are really joyful. I mean, yeah, um, people emailing us and people calling us and encouraging us. It's, it's just a joy. And um, Mitch and I and Ayo and Peter are like just overwhelmed with joy when we hear those things. It's because, you know, that's what we work for. It's, uh, it's to show people the truth and hopefully they continue and abide with the truth. And it's it's our reward. It's our reward. People, people, yeah. seeing, yes. people seeing the truth. And it's yeah. not, I mean, Teresa stated it very clearly. It's not about um, how close you are to someone. It's not about the flesh. I love Mike. We all love Mike and Sandy and, and Pete and Rumel and... Betty and Fanny and Aaron, Victor, you, Mitch, we love our sisters and brothers in the body. But at the end of the day, it's not about the respect of persons, it's about the truth. That's the bottom line. And, and anyone that knows me, and I'll say this so some other people can have a chance to speak. When I first came to the body, um, I had fallen out with my brother uh, in Christ, Daryl Brown, but he came to me pleading listen, Angel, this is the truth. And I'm like, no, God, you're going to have to send somebody else because I'm done with Daryl. And I didn't want to hear him. He said, can you write down these scriptures and seek them, you know, search them out? Don't even listen, you know, to me, to hear me, just listen to the word of God and seek, you know, search it out. So I did, trying to at least show Daryl that he was wrong. And in seeking the truth, I saw that it wasn't Daryl's words. These are God's words. And I found the truth and I, I met you all and God brought me to the, the true body of Christ and Christ's body is not divided. So I, I plead with everyone as Teresa has to seek out the truth in all of this. And I believe if we have eyes to hear, I mean, eyes to see and ears to hear, we will know the true voice of the shepherd, the true shepherd. Amen, Angel. We appreciate it. And, and I just wanted to mention, you did mention Sylvan Elders, and I will say that um, I've still not heard from Aaron Lohman. He had not finished reading everything when this came out last week, and, and I have still not heard from Bobby Lynch. When we um, went to him on that Saturday, they said he still hadn't had a chance to go through everything, and so I still don't know what those two um, gentlemen, what, what their understanding is. So, Yeah. Um, Sandra. Hi, 
Thank you for this study. It was very, very good. Um, I have a question. So you know how we die daily? It's a daily death. We die daily. And it, this is the day because tomorrow's not promised. And we live in this day, the day that the Lord gave us. Um, so is, you know, um, Victor, you said about the word, was it a rise or was it rise or the same thing? Rise, is that same thing as resurrection to rise? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the same thing as resurrection. And I'll, I'll show you Hebrews Hebrews uh, 2, 2, 14. Oh, no. Where, where does it say uh, better resurrection again, Mitch? Better, better resurrection. Hebrews 11, 35. Hebrews 11, 35. So, um, Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. If you look at this, they actually, some of them are actually resurrected in the flesh. Look at this. It's the same word, uh, rise, receive their dead and raised to life again. Where is that thing? 386, a standing up again. Can't see the 386, oh, there it is. See this uh, race to life again? There's yes. the 386 again. It's the same word, resurrection, a standing up again. Okay, so, so that, thank you for that. So as you were, you were, when you when you got, we were at that part, um, I came across Deuteronomy, 10 11 mm -hmm. and let me see i have it right here too i'm gonna find it okay deuteronomy 10 11 and the lord said unto me arise and take thy journey before the people and i looked at people who's the people and it was saying um specifically a tribe as those of israel hint collectively troops attendants figuratively a flock and so i said okay that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give thee unto them. So when, when I read that and I was listening to what you're saying, and I was thinking, well, if we die daily and we're we also resurrected in this day, as as the you know, as the Lord um reveals his word to us and he heals us and he heals the land, would that be right to think that that we are resurrected in that day? I also found Arise in, in Isaiah 60, verse 1. I don't know. It just made me think of this. Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And so we live in this day. So would it be accurate to, to use that word that there's a resurrection that occurs almost like a daily crucifixion? The the daily crucifixion is, is the one that... Uh, that um produces the the new man yes it destroys the the old man and the new man is arising like you said and um it's um it's increasing he's increasing in us right uh, so, so am, I, yes. but am i am i correct to think that yeah yeah look at that yeah, it's, it's yeah. actually a milk doctrine the milk doctrine the resurrection from the dead because all the milk doctrines are about is getting your eyes off the physical and the spiritual. And so yes. it's saying, sure, there's a resurrection in the future, but what's the real resurrection? It's within you. Well, what's the real laying on of hands? What's the real baptism? They're all about the new man being formed and the old being judged. Yes. And then, but that also, make, yes, I agree with all that. And then that, but that also makes me think again about that, you know, that in, in each day, it's, before me to lean to my understanding or to acknowledge the Lord in all my ways. And the Lord gives us, he's the one that causes us to prosper and brings to our remembrance of what he says. So then, then we're able to pick up our mat from whatever thing that is before us, that's ailing us so that we're coming to the Lord with our issue, whatever it issue it is. And when we acknowledge the Lord, then we can pick up our mat and, and walk. Is that correct? 
Yeah, that's right. When you're being healed from your infirmities, it's like the Hebrews, it says, strengthen the feeble knees. It's the same thing. Your walk is your way of life. It's your obedience. And when the inside of the cup is clean, then the outside is clean too. And, and you start to function like the body should function. Whereas first, we, it all starts off as very, very sick and damaged and wounded and it has to be strengthened. Yes. I, the, 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 I love this verse, First Thessalonians 5.21. Prove all things. Right? Try the spirits. But after we try the spirits, hold fast that which is good. We, we need to hold fast to the principles. This was and will be the dream is one. If, if we hold fast to those principles, um, it we'll takes take a lot to, to deceive us. Yeah. It would take a lot to deceive us if we apply those principles um, continually and um, consistently. It will take a lot to deceive us. Because, uh, but we need to prove all things. But after we've proven something, the principles, we need to hold fast on them. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I think that was, was your hand up again, Boyd? And then I want to see if that's your hand again, James. Boyd, is your hand still up? Yes. Okay. I won't, I won't be long. This is quick. This goes back to a question a few minutes ago uh, about is, was, and will be. Where is it found in the Bible? And I think maybe Deb's husband, husband asked the question. I'm not sure who it was. But um, now I searched for that years ago and had a hard time finding it. But it's not always worded exactly that way. And I give an example in Revelation 1.4. It says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him, speaking about Christ, which is and which was and which is to come. Well, which is to come is the same thing as saying will be. So we're saying the same thing, but it's not in the exact words of is, was, and will be, which we always say because that's the name of you know, Mike's website, is, was, and will be.com. So I will make that point, and you'll find it in many places in Scripture. If you do the search on various different words, it may be a better way to do the search. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. Uh, somebody can provide a list of all those locations that have uh, those three uh, phrases. Sometimes it has was before is. I think twice was comes before is, and all the other times is becomes before was. So they are in many places. It's just not all that easy to find with a word search. Sounds like a project for you, Mr. Boyd. Oh, oh boy. You walked right into that, Boyd. <laughs> I mean, nobody in all these years has done that? I don't know. Maybe. Not sure. Well, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Who is it to ask the question so I can be sure and get it to the right person? I wanted to give Tom a chance. Hey, Tom, I see you qu quoted this verse here. Did you want to read that? I think that was Ron uh, Boyd. This was Tom and Nancy. Tom sent a verse in. Yeah, I, I'm here. It was just uh, I lost what I wrote wrote down. Oh, it says, uh, but now he obtained a more excellent ministry by which he also has a mediator of a better covenant that was established upon better promises. Those are uh, witnesses to what you were saying earlier. Amen. Amen. That's that's the the promises of Christ are better, and they come to all men. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Appreciate it, Tom. James, is your hand up again there? No. Oh. Can't hear you, James. All right, Roderick. Hi, Roderick. Hey, everyone. And then I see Jonathan and Sue. I see y'all there. I just saw it. Yeah, I, I just want to say I appreciate the study, and um, you know, they say God is working all these things out to counsel His own will. Um, I heard some of the questions um regarding fire. I just wanted to share a few verses on the positive of um fire. Um, I think one of the first ones I'm trying to Go to it on um, one second if you guys give me give me a second.
Alright, almost there. Okay. All right. Um, on Genesis three, I think I heard Anthony or someone say on Genesis three twenty four, it said he drove out man and he said the cherubim and the flame of the flashing sword toward the east of the Garden of Eden to guard the way to the tree of life. It's it's no way to the tree of life itself through the flashing sword, and that is all. Um, second that this is everything that's the cross that's everything God telling us in the beginning and in numbers 31 23 everything that may abide the fire ye shall make it grow go through the fire and it shall be clean nevertheless it shall be purified with water and separation and all that abide and not the fire shall make go through the water and Right now, the fire proves us in Psalm 63. It's, ton, it's just tons of example. The, the, the fire purifies us, and that's, that's the point I want to make. It, it just keep purifying us until, you know, that day, you know, everything is completely burnt up and gone. And then, Lord willing, we'll be like our maker, and we'll be in his image. And so, just appreciate the study. Amen. Appreciate it, Roderick. Thank you, Roderick. Yes, sir. Really good verses. Jonathan, Hi, thank you so much for everybody hosting this, and we're so glad because we, we hate to miss out on any of the studies, and we just love the teachings of Christ, and we're so blessed to be here. Um, we were thinking about the verse John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. In Psalm 25, 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee I do wait all the day. And that is what we do. We wait for God to reveal himself to us through all the means that he has, which is everything, um, whether it be nature or each other or ourselves or circumstances or trials or favor, he he's so good to to do that. John 24, 24, I'm sorry, 424, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And that is the goal. We are all headed to that. And we know that um, in Romans 2.29, that we're not his unless we're his inwardly and that the circumcision is that of the heart he takes our hard heart and he softens it in the spirit and not in the letter and we don't praise men but we praise god we we don't fear men but we fear god and that's a bit by bit process and it doesn't happen all at once and we can't expect it of ourselves or each other for it to happen all at once and um, first kings 8 56 blessed be the lord who has given rest to his people according to all that he has promised there has not failed one word of all of his good promise which he promised through and then it goes on to say his servant moses but we know that it's through everything we know that um, in 1 John 4.20, that if someone says, I love God, if we hate any of our brothers, you know, whether it be now or in the future, you know, everybody's our brother, everybody, no matter who they are, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And um, lastly, 1 Peter 5, 3, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And we all are going to someday, God willing, if we endure to the end, have people that we get to teach and lead. And that our great reward is that we get to fill up in the afflictions of Christ. And we get to know that we're doing that so that we can feel joyful and and praise God that we're counted worthy to suffer for his sake. So I just want to thank our brothers, all of our courage that God's given us all. And, and also, I, I do believe that all our brothers 
and our leaders have the best in heart and that they really do believe what they're doing is right. I don't think anybody is purposely being untrue or anything like that. And I do believe that um, it's only one, the enemy that would want to tear the body apart. And I, I do know also it's very important to follow the truth and to know the truth. And I do think that in time, it will be revealed at his due season, just like Sarah had her baby when appointed. The angel came and said, next year this time we'll conceive and have a baby. Before that, you know, there was no expectation, but, but then when it happened, it happened. And that's the way it is. When it happens, it happens. And I have faith that he who started a good work will be faithful to complete it. And um, we love you. Amen, Sue. Thank you, Sue. I love that verse, First Peter 5, 3, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And this is Peter speaking when, uh, and he's, he's saying this because he went through this. He was arguing with the, with the apostles, uh, who, is the, who is the greatest among them. He was, you know, and the Lord rebuked him and said, those are for the Gentiles. Don't, don't do that. If you want to be the greatest, you, you, you need to be the, the servant. That's right. You need to be the servant of all. Thank you. Amen. Tobias. Hey, Tobias, you there? Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, hey, Victor and Mitch, hey, just wanted see. to say. Hey, Victor. Hey, Mitch, just wanted to say thank you uh, to you two for the study and all those who have provided witness to the truth. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome, brother. Great to see you here. Deb? Did you raise your hand again, Deb? I just want to focus on that word endure, mm -hmm. endure to the end. You know, to endure something is hardship. You know, it's, it's struggling. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's fiery trials. It's fire. It's, it's the wooden stubble. It's to endure. It, it's not a walk in the park, but we do it because we know that it produces good fruit and it is, what we know Christ, how we get Christ in us and how our character and how we die daily. So the enduring is such a strong word in itself. Why would they say endure to the end if it wasn't, you know, something that we go through as, you know, as, as the lake of fire, as, as, as trials, fire, you know, the same thing. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. No more hands. James, are you there? I wanted to say just a couple things. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um. First off, um, as far as new doctrine, you know, to be perfectly honest, I feel like. All right. I know that both sides are bringing something new, new to the table. Uh, the new thing that Mike is bringing that I see is exactly what Teresa mentioned, which is that he's saying that we don't necessarily live by every word, which is what he said on Saturday, which is what Teresa just said to us in this call. Um, and then on, on the other side, you know, uh, you guys are saying that, you know, it's, it's really direction. Um, so I'm just saying that the both both sides are bringing something new to the table that, uh, you know, uh, I, I know for a fact that um, uh, every single elder, 11 plus, <laughs> um, has talked about two resurrections. 
and, and never said that there was one resurrection up until, you know, this month. Uh, that one email that um, Ernesto referenced, no one's denying that Mike wrote that, but the thing is, is that uh, that's one email. But there's a thousand on the other side to talk about two resurrections. Like I said, I've, I've heard, I've been around, you know, if not on personally, it, I've been in discussions with, pe you know, these elders on Skype or on fellowship calls, discuss these things in depth, asking questions and wanting more answers to specifically how things work out, about the future, all that stuff. And I've never come across any of the elders saying that there's just really, truly one resurrection. So I'm just, you know, saying that for the benefit of everybody. Um, the only other thing I want to say is some, something that, you know, I kind of brought up and, you know, after I made my first comment, you know, I, I wanted to respond, but, you know, didn't get a chance, whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, uh, Amp kind of brought it up, too, is that, you know, we're talking about being blotted out. Well, of course, everybody's blotted out. But those that make it into the first resurrection, they're written in before they die. So if they make it in before they die, and it says clearly that we don't experience the lake of fire, there's got to be a difference. To me, it's clear as day. I'm using the scriptures. I'm not twisting the scriptures. The scriptures are very plain. Like I already mentioned about that example, and Daniel is, is extremely convincing to me that you don't get hurt of the lake of fire. That's exactly what Mike's saying. Um, you know, uh, you know the, the scriptures in Revelation talk about not being hurt of the second death, which is, we all agree, is the second death, the lake of fire, same exact thing. So, you know, it can't be both, both ways, you know, and if you're saying that, you know, like I was saying, you're blotted out, but you're written back in before we die, right, if, we, if we're the elect, and again, you guys will say, well, we experience everything alike, but you can't have the thousand years after you've already made it in the first resurrection. You're completed, like Teresa said, like the scripture says, we're perfected on the third day. So how can you experience the thousand years after that? You can't. And that's what I'm saying that you guys have referenced. It's in IO's 56 page. I've referenced it uh, the other day. I mean, I could tell you exactly what page and where exactly it's found where he says that um, that we experienced a thousand years after we're perfected. How, how is that possible? I don't get it. So, um, you know, I can be as open minded as anybody, but I just haven't heard one single argument, honestly, that convinces me to give it a second thought. I still support Mike 100 percent. I still believe that everything he's teaching is correct. You know, uh, to me, the only thing that he's changed is him saying that it's not 100 percent that we live by every word. And he gave his examples. His examples make sense to me of why he says that there are a few exceptions. We're not saying that it's 10 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent. It's it's a high percentage, but there are a few exceptions to living by every word. And like I say, I don't I'm not going to repeat what those are for the sake of time and, and because we all were there present on, on Sunday when he mentioned what those things are so with that I'll, I'll finish and let you guys give your your input or comments um, yeah. I will, um, go ahead, go ahead Mitch. I will explain one thing for the benefit of everybody and the, so let's talk about the life of Paul and what is the thousand year reign in Paul's life and what is the lake of fire in Paul's life. So the thousand year reign is symbolic of the rule of the rod of iron, which is being under the law, right? So before Paul was knocked down on the road to Damascus, he was a Pharisee completely under the law, right? That's what he was under. And once he was knocked down on the road and his eyes began to be opened, that's when the Lord gave him a down payment of the spirit. But did he come out from under the law all at once? Well, no, he still went and circumcised Timothy. He still went and did those sacrifices. And that's how it is in all of our lives. We don't come out of Babylon in one day. So part of us 
decreasing and Christ increasing is but your your part of you is under the thousand year reign, some of you is in the lake of fire, and then the new man is ruling and reigning. And that's part of the mystery of the scriptures, how it's a it's a process that works together until it's completed. It's not done all at once. And that's what that paper explains is how the new man is executing judgment on the old. And we all have things in our life that we know we're not right to do. Our heart isn't right. And the best we can do is just keep our mouth shut. You're keeping yourself under the rod of iron. And why are you doing that? Because you've got the down payment, down payment of Christ in your heavens, but you still haven't completely overcome everything. And so that's the, the deep mystery of scriptures. It's explaining that inward process that takes a lifetime to, to complete. Victor, do you want to say something? Um, yeah, the only thing I want to comment, I know James has a lot of questions, and I think what would be helpful is, uh, yeah, if you um, if you want a detailed um, conversation, and you can email any one of us, and um, we, we'll go from there. Um, and the, the, only, the only thing I want to comment in, on that is, as we've shown here that every word actually means all the words i mean you, you can just go through any any of the all where it says all there's no exception and uh, the 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 best one is ephesians 1 11. i mean he works all things after the counsel of his will so there's no exception really so when it says um we live by all the words there's no exception so that's what we're standing on, and I know we're given the faith that we have right now. So, yeah, it's um, it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. What, what, um, whatever faith His, the Lord is gonna give us is what we're gonna have, and um, Jonathan and Sue, is y'all's hand up again? No, not that we know. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, it's getting late here. Um, Thank you for uh, being with us. Uh, that was, uh, was that th three hours, Mitch? <laughs> a long one. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to get this thing posted tonight. I'll work on it. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, Tom. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Love you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Now, what to it? Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you for the study. Thank you for the study. Hey, Victor. <laughs>